everyone, and welcome to Yarngasm. I'm Kristen, and this is episode 157. If you are a returning viewer, thanks so much for coming back. And if you are a new viewer, thanks so much for checking out my podcast and spending a little bit of your week with me, talking about knitting, spinning, and hand dyeing yarn. So I hope everyone is staying cool, by the way. Uh, it's been a very, very hot summer so far. Uh, lots of rain, but today and yesterday, uh, has been it, it actually cooled down quite a bit uh, right now there's a nice breeze coming through my window so I don't have to have the air conditioner on all the time uh, it just feels really really good um, but that said I hope everyone is staying cool and just basically enjoying enjoying your summer uh, so but yeah so no new updates to really talk about before I dive into things uh, but I did want to give a quick shout out to uh, about Maria if you're not familiar with the uh, Subway Knits podcast uh, my good friend Maria uh, who's known as Venus Pawery uh, on Ravelry uh, she has a podcast as I mentioned uh, and she is actually teaching a class on Japanese uh, Japanese knitting so uh, signups and registrations are ending this weekend I believe um, so you can still register it's an online class uh, and I will post a link in the show notes uh, and the down bar where you can get all the information uh, it's knitting in Japanese uh, and registration ends July 26th and classes begin on Monday July 27th uh, 2015 and I'm sorry somebody's driving by my house blasting some really fun music but anyway um, so I just wanted to give a quick shout out to that uh, Maria is as I mentioned a really good friend of mine and she's awesome she's a wonderful teacher um, and I if you are interested in learning a new technique especially Japanese knitting uh, reading chart patterns uh, because it's a great skill to have and there I will say um, there are so many knitting books in Japanese with charts and everything and it can be intimidating when you flip through them it's written in a, an entirely different language but if you know how to read charts you can basically get uh, you know the gist of it but Maria will explain everything in the class and anyway if you're interested check it out um, it should be a lot of fun and yeah so otherwise I'm gonna dive into what I've been knitting and I have been getting some knitting done it's been a little slightly hectic week work-wise on uh, just getting things done around the house and whatnot but um, I have been knitting and it's wonderful <laughs> as knitting should be and I'm babbling I really am <laughs> so anyway um, I'm recording fairly early it's a quarter to tw ah, I'm recording around the same time I usually do it's a quarter to 12 in the afternoon here so um, but yes, in my Lovely Fluffy Fibers project bag, handmade by the lovely Isabel of the Fluffy Fibers podcast, she, she was so lovely, she sent me this beautiful project bag, um, and I've been keeping my project that she designed, her shawl pattern, uh, Verdure, in, uh, inside. So here's, this is in my hand-dyed colorway, uh, Succulents, on my Blitz base, so I don't know if you can see the sparkles in there um, but yeah it knit up so soft and I'm still working my way on the applied border I know last time I said I could probably bang one of these out in like a day or something <laughs> no not happening but you know just I, when I've been having some downtime and watching podcasts I've been knitting away on it and it, I will say it does fly like when I work on it it just goes um, so it's just a matter of me finding time to actually work on these things but uh, here's where I am on the applied border and it, like lace always looks so crinkly when you're knitting it until but when you block it it's beautiful so once this blocks out I love the way like the edging is going to look um, and it's all this is is lace uh, yarn overs knit and purl stitches with the occasional uh, left-leaning left-leaning uh, decrease and right-leaning decrease so super simple but it creates this really really beautiful design so Isabel really did a lovely job designing this and yeah like I said last time I could I can knit another one after I'm done with this um, so yeah I'm having a lot of fun with that and I'm using my uh, car buns my interchangeable US size 7 or no I these are size 6 US size 6 4 millimeter carbon interchangeables ah. um, so yeah that's where I am with 
that. And this is how much yarn I have left over. I forgot to weigh it again, so I don't, but I, I definitely will have enough left to complete the shawl. So, yay. Um, okay, so then last night, because I was so, I couldn't, I, I've been mulling over in my mind, like what kind of yarn I wanna use for this. I was gonna order some new yarn, use some stuff that I already have in my stash, but then the yarn that I purchased from Cape Cod uh, on our last trip it was just, it wanted to be this shawl, my summer in Kansas um, pattern that I'm knitting. And there is, I'm having a knit along. It's a small knit along and the thread is in the, um, the Ravelry group, the Yarngasm Ravelry group. Um, so if you pop over there, there are a couple people who are joining in on this. And the reason why I believe it is um, not as big as a knit along as many of my others is because the pattern is not easy to find. Um, you have to order it, they have to mail it to you, and it comes um, in a pattern like this. So this is the Summer in Kansas Shawl by Two Old Bags. I don't think Two Old Bags are around anymore. Um, I believe they're in... Oh. I don't know the whole story, but I know the original owners of Two Old Bags passed off their business to somebody else. So it's a little hard to find, but if you can find it online, I will try and post a link to where you can get it. Um, you have to order it and they will mail it to you. You cannot download this online anywhere, which is really unfortunate. Um, but yeah, uh, a couple of you have joined the knit along, so I am not setting a start date, end date. I'm not probably not gonna be giving away prizes. Um, maybe, I don't know, I haven't decided yet, but um, this right now it's just it's just a fun knit along so if you feel like taking on this challenge and ordering of ordering it and casting on with us yay awesome <laughs> but i cast it on last night finally um i didn't get too far in it and i oh i've been keeping it or i've decided to keep it in this <sighs> okay sam who is i hope you don't mind me mentioning your name i think you're okay with it I'm sorry, <laughs> but you know what? She was so lovely. Uh, we did a tea swap. We did a mini skein tea swap a while back, and she was so kind and generous. She sent me this beautiful, awesome, gorgeous project bag. Um, she said the pattern reminded me of uh, reminded her of me, and she is so right. How freaking awesome <laughs> is that pattern? It's mauve for one. The background is mauve, and it has all these kind of like haunting trees and then all these ghostly dresses just kind of Victorian dresses romancing in in the background I don't know it's it's I love it this pattern is just so me and then it has little tiny ghosts I don't know if you can see that there's a little ghost and a bunny rabbit running through there and then it's lined with this really cool spiderweb doily pattern it's just so cool. Sam, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I am smitten with this. And it's so incredibly well made. She has, she actually has an Etsy shop. I don't think she sells project bags, but um, she sells a lot of crochet uh, accessories uh, and things, which I will post, obviously, a link to in the show notes. So, Sam, thank you. Um, and she wrote, like a really, she wrote a really lovely note to go along with it. Um, but yes, I've been keeping my, um, Summer in Kansas uh, shawl in here, and there's only 270 yards per skein, and I ordered, I only purchased two, so I made another purchase um, online yesterday, and I will have three more skeins coming to me, because I believe they're, the pattern requires uh, 1,400, 1,400 yards. Um, but here's where I am so far. I know many of you, who, I, those of you who join the knit along are, um, have already started and probably way ahead of me by now, but I think this is the right side. Yes. Um, so yeah, it's just a very, um, like a very lattice-y kind of cobwebby feel to it. And this yarn is, ac it's considered, it says that it's fingering weight, but it's actually more of a lace weight. It's very fine and lightweight. And I have my, um, caterpillar, my caterpillar uh, design stitch marker, the, my favorite uh, skull <laughs> with a, with an eye patch. Yeah, so he makes me so happy. Um, so I'm using US size six. I probably could have gone up in needle size, but I don't know, just lace weight on super big needles. I I don't know, I wasn't feeling it. So I, I went with what the, what the pattern suggested, US size six. So, but so far it's, 
it's going very well. And I feel like I should show you the label of the yarn that I'm using. So this is Isager, Isager. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, it's alpaca merino made in Peru. And I purchased two, as I mentioned, I purchased two skeins of these at um, a great yarn in Cape Cod. Um, and it's 50% alpaca and 50% uh, wool. Alpaca, yeah, so, and yeah, it's real, it's there. I don't, it doesn't have a colorway name. It's 703401 alpaca two number sevens. I, I really don't know the method behind their madness, but um, yeah, so, but so far it is so soft and so just really lovely to work with so far. And oops, sorry, goes there. And I know it's summer and once the heat cranks up again, <laughs> once the sun comes out again and just makes everything ridiculously hot, I don't know how much I'm going to want to knit on this, um, just because I don't want to overheat or anything, but right for right now, I'm okay inside with the air conditioner. It's, it's lovely. So yeah, that's where I am with that. So, okay. Yes. Truck. We decided to move on a really loud, on a really noisy street. I don't know if you can tell after watching for a couple of weeks. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's quite loud. So um, that is all I really worked on this week as far as knitting goes. I did not put a dent in my Cozy Memories blanket. Um, I have been spinning though. The uh, summer sock cowl is underway. It started July 1st and going all the way until September 1st. So, and I've been, oh my gosh, you guys are spinning up such beautiful, beautiful braids. I've been checking in on the, uh, the Ravelry group. Um, there's a chatter thread and a non-chatter thread, and I've just been popping in there, and oh my gosh, the work that you guys are doing is so inspiring and so pretty. Um, it's it's just, and I'm having really, I'm having such a fun time joining in with you guys, and I obviously have been putting, I don't know if you saw the photos on Instagram, but I put in a huge dent um, on my braid, which is Gourmet Stash. Uh, broken ornaments. It's from her 2014 uh, Christmas collection, and I, you probably can't see it, but it's uh, white, blue, teal, and then there's this bright magenta in here, and then underneath here there's like this gold, and they really do look like Christmas ornaments that are broken because of the um, because the the fiber is so sparkly. There's so much Stellina in it. This is what I have left of it. Uh, it's about two ounces. So once I'm done spinning, I have a little bit more of the other two ounces that I'm spinning. But once that's done, I'm going to switch bobbins uh, and spin this up and then two ply it together to make uh, a sock yarn. I don't know if it's going to come out exactly fingering weight. It might be a sport weight, um, but we'll see. We'll see. And I don't know if I have, let me see, here's the tag so you can get an idea. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, what is it? 48% superwash merino and 16% Stellina. Stellina. That is a lot of Stellina, my friends. Um, so you can just imagine it is sparkly. <laughs> and I'm having so much fun spinning this. Um, so yeah. And then what else have I, have I been doing? I've been drop spindling a little bit on my hobbledehoy fiber, uh, my batling. I'm in the middle of plying it. It's a little bit in a, a slight tangle, but I'm, yeah, it's, okay, here we go. Okay, so um, I'm in the middle of plying it. I basically wound it into a little tiny cake that's slightly tangled, uh, and then I'm pulling from the center and the outside and just kind of um, doing it counterclockwise as such, and it's plying up on itself. So just giving you, a, give you an idea of how I've been doing this. It's probably not the right way, but I'm just doing this for fun right now. No grand plans for this little scheme, even though the colorway is so pretty. Um, so yeah, <laughs> and this is on my golding, golding drop spindle, which I really, I, I'm, I'm, I love spinning on it. It is such a well-made spindle and a dream. So a little bit of an investment, but totally worth it. Every spinner should have a golding in their collection. You don't need one, but I'm just saying, if you, if you want to, you know, why not treat yourself? <laughs> oh 
oh gosh, that should be the motto of this entire podcast and my life. Just treat yourself. It's yeah. Anyway, so that is it for spinning. Um, sewing, <laughs> I have been uh, down a slight rabbit hole with that. Um, uh, I mentioned that I was going to sew a dress from the So Little, uh, what is it? So Many Dresses, So Little Time, but cover, I left the book over there, but I showed it to you guys the last week um, and I was going to sew the cover dress. It was like an off the shoulder, kind of 50s retro style dress. Um, and this was my first time doing princess, like a, a princess bodies. And that was fine. That went over very well until the directions for the interfacing uh, came into play. And <laughs> I had, I think if they had provided a pattern or a cutout for it, I would have been totally fine. But because um, they only provide you with like a blue, uh, uh, patterns for, that you can trace and mix and match, but this one was a modified version of the princess bodies. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's it's a style. It's a shape of you know, the top portion of a dress is called the bodies, and the cut or the different pieces of it is called, um, just for is called is what you call a princess cut. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, until, so everything was fine and dandy until um, the directions basically were, went totally vague and they're like, well, to make the next cut the interfacing and to do that, trace the outline of the neckline and the armholes. And because it was a modified version of the, like a, the original cut, uh, pattern that they provided, the armholes were kind of wonky and I didn't really understand where I had to cut and there was nowhere in the book where it explained that. So. Um, yeah, I, I tried doing it on my own. Granted, I probably should have reached out to one of you guys and just said, hey, what would you do here? But no, I was just so excited. I was so excited to just get it done. And I was in the moment and it didn't work out. I botched it. So thankfully, it was only the bodies that was messed up. And I had enough uh, fabric left over to make another one of these, which is... Uh, my Pusta Bluma dress, <laughs> as Molly has dubbed it. Um, it's my dandelion dress. And in German, dandelion means, pu uh, dandelion is Pusta Bluma. So it's my Pusta Bluma dress. Yay. But yes, I have, I have enough fabric to make another one of these. So I'm in the middle of uh, making another one. So stay tuned for that. And that was out of that black pinstripe fabric. Um, I'll just show you now because I had enough, I was playing around with um, just, you know, I had some scraps lying around and I was playing around with making some project bags. So, but yes, this is, the, I made this, you guys, look. <laughs> and uh, so this is obviously just a scrap bag that I made. Um, but yes, this was the fabric that I was using. And then this is leftover um, fabric from some drapes that I mended. Uh, me and Dennis, we went to, we, anyway, we went to Ikea and they have like a sale section, uh, like they do. And I fell in love with these drapes, but they were way too long. So, um, but they were on sale and they were gonna be gone. And I was like, but I love them. So I bought them anyway. And I just cut out off like so much fabric to hang on our windows. And um, I have like enough to make like 10 of these bags. So <laughs> one is fine for me, but um, yeah. So I've, I've just been playing around you know, I, I had so much fun making this and a couple of other ones. I was just kind of thinking maybe, maybe I might start selling project bags. I don't know. Um, I ordered some fabric, so I'm just going to have fun. I'm going to make a couple of project bags, um, put them in the shop. I don't know when that will happen, but uh, we'll see how they do. And, you know, we'll go from there. I don't know how often I will have project bags. Um, but I think it would be nice, you know, to maybe mix things up a little bit uh, since I'm having so much fun sewing as well as dyeing yarn and all that jazz. It's I think it'll be, you know, a really fun thing to add to the shop um, because obviously, as I mentioned, I'm having fun sewing and yes, because yeah, why not? Why not? Let's let's give it let, let's give it a go, shall we? <laughs> so. Yes, this week I've just been, you know, here and there sewing little mini test bags, um, you know, just playing around with the different, different styles, seeing which ones I like, uh, which ones work. And so that'll, that'll just be, you know, 
something to this, uh, blah, blah, <laughs> something to look forward to uh, in the shop coming soon. Yay! So I know I said in the last episode it wouldn't happen or whatever, but I don't know. <laughs> so, but anyway, that's something to look forward to. So other than that, uh, I think that is it for sewing. And let me see, do I have anything else to talk about? Yeah, no, that's it for sewing. So I'm gonna move on to, oh my goodness, so many car alarms. What is going on? Someone probably just does not have their key and trying to get it out with a hanger. I don't know, my imagination runs wild. Um, okay, so. <laughs> ask away. <laughs> I was like, what the heck are they talking about? Um, okay, so Jen knitting, uh, Jen knitting around on Ravelry asks, hi Kristen, I'm a new listener to the podcast and really enjoy it. I'm headed up to NYC soon and by default always hit up Pearl Soho, which I love, but I would like to maybe explore some other yarn stores. Do you have any suggestions? Thanks. Okay, I feel like I've talked about my favorite um, yarn shops before, but for new viewers, uh, I will definitely mention those again. Um, yes, I've, I have never been to Pearl Soho. Am I crazy? Probably. I probably should get there and check it out myself, but um, I guess because I'm in Brooklyn, I don't always make it into the city unless I have to, and I don't normally find myself in Soho as often as I used to be when I used to live in the city. But anyway, um, my favorite, favorite uh, yarn store will always be in Brooklyn is, uh, <laughs> will always be, I don't know, this but um, is Brooklyn uh, General. And that is on Union Street in, oh, I always get those neighborhoods confused. I don't think it's Carroll Gardens. <sighs> I think it is Borum Hill, I believe, but it's on Union Street. I will post the link to their shop. Uh, but Brooklyn General is a wonderful, wonderful uh, yarn shop. They have fabric, they have notions, they, ha they have so they have, they have a huge selection uh, and it's really welcoming when you go in there. Nobody hovers over you. Um, they just give you your space. And if you want to meet up with a group of people, they have a back room where they have classes and a giant table. You can just hang out there. Um, they have books and it's just, it's really homey when you go in there. And um, as I mentioned, you just feel very welcome and free to roam around and enjoy. Uh, so definitely check them out. Um, and there's also La Casita, which is very close by. It's actually right off the train, the G train, uh, and I think the F train, uh, when you get off, that's closer to the, the train stop actually. But, um, they're, they're a very smaller, they're a very tiny store. Um, they have a cafe, so, um, you can go there, you can have a snack, you can have wine, you can have coffee, tea. It's really, really cute and quaint. The selection, I would say, is not it definitely not as big as Brooklyn General, um, but it is very cozy in there, and you definitely get you know there's a welcoming feeling when you go in there too. Nobody hovers over you, um, and they have very good classes as well. So definitely check those guys out as well. And of course, my all my all time favorite is Gage Intention, uh, which is only open on weekends. Uh, Michelle. Wong from uh, who designs a lot of patterns for uh, Brooklyn Tweed wool people. Uh, you might know her from there. But every weekend she has uh, she opens her shop at uh, the Brooklyn Craft Company, which is in Greenpoint, my old stomping grounds. And it's just really it's almost like I always say it's like a speakeasy. There's no signs on the doors. I mean, she has a sign out there, um, you know, to knock on the door or you know directions to get inside. Um, but I just love that it's this little, you know, kind of you know, hideaway in, in Brooklyn. And, you know, she always has, she has a great selection too. She always curates uh, indie dyers and, you know, lesser known, but super talented uh, fiber artists. So definitely check Gage Intention out as well. Um, I will post links to these uh, for sure in the show notes uh, so you can get more info. Um, and she always has uh, a class going on or some kind of, you know, spotlight um, uh, trunk show happening. I've done trunk shows there. Um, so yeah, anyway, uh, and I think that's it for Brooklyn. Um, I'm trying to think if there's, those are the three, the main three that I can think of, uh, that are here right now. And there is, okay. I did, I don't know if I mentioned this on the last episode, but I did visit my local yarn shop in Bushwick, uh, which is called the Brooklyn Yarn Cafe. And I was a little disappointed, I will be honest. Uh, it's a really cute place. You can go there, get snacks, uh, coffee, um, and they have classes there, but 
the shop was a little bit in a disarray. Um, I, again, the woman who was working there was very nice, did not hover, was very helpful, but there were, everything I just felt like was all over the place. Uh, their fabric, they had you know, a lot of quilting fabric. Um, just, it was, it was very disorganized um, and very, very overpriced, I found. Um, but, and I don't know, I, I don't know if I would go, if I really needed fabric or something, maybe I'd go back there, or if I wanted to take a class, I might go back there. They do offer sewing classes, um, soap making classes, baking classes. It's very, um, there's lots going on there. But yeah, overall, I don't think I would make, if you're here just visiting, I don't know if I would make the trip out there to go to there. <laughs> but that's my honest opinion. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, so there's that. And then um, that's pretty much it. So for this week's Ask Away. But again, if you have any questions that you would like me to answer on the podcast, be it knitting related, spinning related, hand dyeing, or just anything else, go pop into the Yarngasm Ravelry group and there's a thread called Ask Away and just ask me anything. So without further ado, it's a very short episode I feel like this week. Um, just because I feel like I don't have a lot on my needles this week. I don't know, what have you. But anyway, I'm going to move on to shop update. So, and uh, Kristen's makeup bag, in case you're curious and blather. So if you're not interested in that, I will see you next time. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. Um, but if you want to hear more, stick around um, because I'm having a shop update tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, as usual, uh, on villainvineyarns.com. And that date is, oh gosh, what date is it? I think it's, it's the, okay, show notes, or down bar, down bar. It's going to be in the down bar, but it's tomorrow, Friday, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So definitely check it out. Um, I will have a lot of lace weight to show you. Um, I, for some reason, I just decided to go crazy with the lace weight because it's summer, um, and people don't want to have like this heavy thing on their lap. So I figure lace weight is the way to go. Um, so this is my lift base, 80% uh, uh, <laughs> uh, superwash merino, 20% uh, silk. Uh, and this is, I had to dye fairy hair on here. Um, and then I dyed up some beach house. And then I was actually thinking about knitting uh, my summer in Kansas shawl out of this, but I already, I don't know if you can see it, it's hanging on the wall. <laughs> I already knit my um, water lily out of Beach House. So I was like, mm, maybe I should just broaden my horizons a little bit. Um, I was actually watching uh, the Little Bobbins Knit, uh, the Little Bobbins podcast with Danny uh, yesterday, and she knit the most beautiful, um, Oh, Pebble Beach shawl. Uh, I it was just stunning. I I just fell in love with it after seeing hers, and immediately I thought, fairy hair, it must be a Pebble Beach, and I think it requires 800 grams, 800 yards, for the project, and this has way more than that. I think there's like 800 and. Oh goodness, I can't remember. But I think there's like 870 yards in here, so I will have some left over. Um, so this is definitely going to be a pebble beach. Um, as if I don't have enough projects on the needles at the moment. Uh, and then I have Myth. Two skeins of this, Myth. Um, and then I've dyed a bunch of these colors across the board, so not just specific, specifically on lace. And I'm just showing you what colorways I have right now. I'm going to be dyeing some more later. Um, I have C Lab on Blitz, uh, and then I this one I have not dyed in a while. Um, Neptunia, I have this on several bases. Uh, and this one I only have on lace weight right now, uh, which is a color that I have not dyed in a while. This is my Lab Synth colorway, which is bright lime green, but it reminds me of uh, Absinthe. If you know what that is, it's a uh, liqueur, which was banned, <laughs> which was made illegal for a long time. You probably know the history of this. And then only recently they brought it back because yeah, green fairy. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's bright green. And then this is a one of a kind colorway that I have not named yet, but there's, it's kind of like a, a light blue, light green blue with uh, brown speckles in it some pink, um, just a really, it reminds me of the seashore, I don't know, it's just very, 
very tranquil and lovely. And this is only on lace. I also have uh, Nevermore, which is this lovely <laughs> dark gray uh, shaded solid, uh, which is very, very, very goth. Um, so there's that. And I will also have its close cousin, thrice removed. <laughs> um, <laughs> Whatever, Kristen. Um, on Poe, I will have Poe, which is a lighter version of that. Um, and yes, so it's not reskinned. I just have to reskin these and twist them up. Uh, but yeah, that will be in the shop tomorrow. Uh, I hope you can make it. And yeah, otherwise, that is pretty much it. And as I mentioned, I'm going to be having project bags very, very soon. I don't know when, but I will definitely, definitely keep you posted. Um, Right now I'm just having fun playing around with uh, all the different designs and seeing what works, what you know I like, what I don't like. Um, and I just ordered a lot of fabric and I'm super excited about it. So you guys totally didn't see that coming, did you? <laughs> oh, anyway, um, is my microphone working? I don't know. Okay, but um, yeah, so otherwise I'm gonna move on to Blather and Kristen's makeup bag because we do have some questions today, a lot of questions actually about makeup. So. <laughs> And this is the segment, in case you're just tuning in, uh, where I just talk a little bit about makeup because a lot of you have been asking me about, you know, what makeup I use and everything, which I am totally flattered by. You guys are awesome. Thank you. And I'm happy to share, you know, what I know about this stuff. So, okay, I've got a couple questions. Um, and Isabel... Hi, Isabel <laughs> from the Fluffy Fibers podcast um, asks, I would love to hear how you do your brows. They are so well-defined, yet not over the top. Thank you. Um, I typically don't do anything with mine, but I feel a little definition wouldn't hurt. I'm just afraid of overdoing it. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. So to answer your question, um, I hope I can explain this right, but um, I use, well, a little backstory. In the 90s, <laughs> I used to tweeze my eyebrows super pencil thin, which was not a good look on me now that I look back on it, but I thought it was the greatest thing at the time. Yeah. Um, so, but I think because I tweezed them, my eyebrows so much, they did not grow back to their fullest, <laughs> which I, I'm sure is, you know, it, it happens, it happens. But, you know, I don't have like gaping holes, but I do have like these little patches that I generally just fill in with a pencil. And I use this one by CoverGirl, um, Brow and Eye Makers. And it's a, a dark brown. And like it, it comes in a pack of two, five bucks US at the local drugstore. This is like one, the thing that I don't, you know, I invest in eyeliner, I invest in lipstick. I, I don't invest in the basics, which I consider eyebrow pencils. I find this one works very well. Um, and it's dark brown, as I mentioned. Uh, I, I used to, when I, I used to dye my hair jet black and I would, I first started, you know, I immediately thought, okay, that means I have to color my eyebrows jet black as well. And, but that w looked super harsh on me. So I went up a, a shade <laughs> and I find that like the dark brown works way better. It doesn't make me look like I have Burton Ernie eyebrows. <laughs> Not that I would have a unibrow, but anyway, anyway, I digress. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I would definitely go a shade lighter than your natural hair color or the hair color that you're currently rocking. Um, and I don't, I don't draw it on. I do little tiny dashes to fill in those little gaps. And then um, you, if you feel your eyebrow, you will feel you have a brow bone, like a natural brow bone. Work with it. Do not try and change it at all because I promise you it will look freaky and you don't want to look freaky. Just work with the brow bone that you were born with. <laughs> and I trust you. It, and believe me, it will look so good if you just follow the lines. It's like coloring in in within the lines. And then maybe if you want to thicken up your eyebrow just a smidge, I would, what I do, I just, you know, go like that. And when I reach that little, et, you will see you have like a natural curve. You stop there and then just kind of do that. And then I always blend it out with one of these puppies, um, which is, I believe it's called, wow, reggae music. I can dig it. I apologize for the background noise, guys. Um, but yeah, I think these are called spoolies, and I purchased this for a dollar. I think El if you're familiar with ELF, uh, ELF, they make a really budget-friendly line of uh, beauty tools. And this one I got for five dollars at a drugstore. I'm sorry, one dollar at a drugstore US. Um, so super inexpensive, but super useful just to kind of like 
brush, you know, blend things out on your eyebrows. Um, so yeah, that's that. I hope that helps. Um, yeah. And I, is there something else I want to mention? Oh, and your eyebrow. <laughs> yes. Uh, when you begin, uh, sometimes people think, oh, that means I have to draw in here too, the little tiny hairs. No, and by no means. And you don't want to tweeze those either because these are very, if the follicles are very sensitive here because you have your tear ducts and whatnot, don't tweeze these little baby hairs unless you have like a unibrow right here, then maybe you want to tweeze there a little bit. But anyway, <laughs> just to clean things up a little bit. Um, so yeah, and also, you know, I sometimes get little stray hairs too, which I tweeze occasionally. I don't go crazy with the tweezing, but you know, just the little stray ones I get. Um, but yes, your eyebrow should always start where your eye starts. <laughs> so if you need help with that, just line up your little tool and just kind of like right here, that's where it's supposed to start. And then end, you know, at the end of your eye, everything's symmetrical. <laughs> so I hope that answers your question, Isabella, and I hope that was helpful to everybody else. Um, I know that was a very long winded answer, uh, but yeah. So anyway, I think there's one more question and I don't want this segment to go on way too long because this is a knitting podcast, you guys. Um, okay, uh, but one more, one more for the road. Um, Inter Interim de Ferro uh, asks, as a fellow pasty lady, <laughs> um, I recently paled out of my, paled out of my, or I guess ran out of my Rimmel Super Fair BB Cream. BB Cream is uh, short for Beauty Bomb. It's, um, I'll explain later. Do you have any suggestions for a replacement that won't make me look like a middle schooler who can't blend yet? Okay, for those of you who aren't familiar with BB Cream, this is, I find, I'm not a fan of BB Cream. It's, it stands for Beauty Bomb, and basically what it is is uh, SPF uh, facial, facial moisturizer that's tinted with like foundation or um, I am not a fan of it, uh, only because I, my normal beauty regimen is like, you know, Face moisturize and then I apply um, uh, foundation. Just light. I don't. I never put foundation all over my face. I just put it in my T zone, which is here and here. This is your T zone, <laughs> and all little red areas, um, like around your nose, and just I only dab it on and blend it in uh, after I put on moisturizer. And the moisturizer acts as a blending agent. So, um, if you, I would definitely say you know invest in some foundation uh, that's your skin tone and just mix it in with a little bit of facial moisturizer, um, and which you're actually making your own beauty bomb, your own BB cream. Um, so I, I think, you know, it, it cuts out a lot of time if you, you know, don't want to sit there mixing uh, foundation and facial cream, by all means, go for it. But um, definitely, you know, I, I'm a huge fan of diluting or uh, diluting your foundation with a little bit of face, facial moisturizer just to kind of, so it's not, you know, caked on. Uh, you don't get that caked on look and it just acts as a screen, not spackle <laughs> when you're putting makeup on your face. So I hope that answers your, your question. Um, and yeah, so otherwise, blather. Uh, I'm gonna, as usual, I'm at a loss for words. I never know what to talk about because yeah, things are pretty much status quo. It's, um, you know, I'm working during the week. Me and Dennis are still working on the house uh, little by little. We finally put pavers out in the backyard, uh, which, if you're not familiar, they're like squares of concrete. So we have the deck, the deck is done, um, but we still have like this whole lot of dirt that we've got to do something with. Um, so we uh, we put papers down there. Uh, Dennis has been working super hard to do that, uh, digging out dirt and laying these things down, which, which papers, by the way, are just like these square concrete things. So we're gonna keep the barbecue down there or maybe put out a little patio set and then roll out some grass. Um, in the backyard. So we have some greenery finally because it's getting, I don't know, I don't think we're gonna have the backyard totally done by the end of the summer, uh, which is fine. It's fine. We got a lot done to begin with, so, and we're enjoying it. Uh, we're barbecuing and all that fun stuff. So, you know, it, it's a work in progress as things are when you move into a new house. So, uh, we're, we have a little bit of work to do this weekend. Um, lots, many more trips to Home Depot, I imagine. <laughs> so, um, which I'm getting, I'm, I am so over. I, I can't, I can't, I can't tell you how tired I am of going to Home Depot, but you know, it's gotta get done. So um, there's that. And then what else? Um, 
Yeah, so Dennis's uh, mom, uh, if, Carol, if you're watching, I know they're watching, they always watch. Uh, we celebrated her retirement this past weekend, so that was really fun. We had the whole family over. Uh, we went out to dinner, and we had this amazing, amazing dinner at this Italian restaurant. They just, the food just kept coming and coming and coming, and we, you had to roll me out of there. <laughs> it was just so full, but the food was so, so good. Um, so yeah, we had a really wonderful time uh, celebrating uh, with Dennis's family. And this weekend, I'm trying to think what else is going on. Um, yeah, I think we're just gonna, you know, try and relax a little bit. Um, still trying to figure out of, you know, we're, we're definitely going up to Cape Cod soon, um, but then we're also trying to plan just like a, a getaway, you know? I, I would, you know, as I mentioned, I would love to just get away for a little while, you know? Get on a plane and go somewhere. I don't know, because I, we need it, we need it. We've been through so much with this place and we just need a nice quiet break. Um, but yeah, that's all TBD. Um, and yeah, Kitty is doing fine. She's up on top of my yarn fortress. This is her new thing. She had the perch, she had the, um, or she still has the window shelf. Uh, and she jumps up on there, sits on there all the time, but then she, she mixes things up a little bit and she jumps up onto my yarn fortress where she can see everything. And she just, I think that's where she likes to hang out. Um, so yeah, that's really fun. <laughs> so, alrighty, I think I will let you guys go. Thank you so much for spending time with me this week. Um, and as always, leave, you know, I love hearing from you guys. I mean, I, and I read all of your emails, your messages on Ravelry. I don't always have time to respond, uh, but I do, I do read them and I do greatly appreciate hearing from you um, and all that, you know, so. Thank you so much, guys, and happy knitting, and I will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>